This conference will now be recorded. Good evening to everyone for the today's session. So in the previous class, we had discussed until uh, units of measure. So we had covered also all the accounting vouchers, that is contra payment, receipt journal vouchers, along with certain uh, inventory-based creations, yes. We had created locations, that's nothing but go-downs, and discussed with units of measure. So today, we will create the units of measure in today's session, and then we can progress with the inventory-based vouchers. Right. So hope all of you are ready. Please log into your companies so that we can begin with today's session. Yes. Now here, we have to go for the creation of units of measure. We have simple and compound units of measure as, as I've discussed uh, in the previous session where if you are using one unit of measure, it is simple units of measure. If you are using more than one unit of measure, it is a compound unit of measure. So how do we create these units of measure? So first I will teach you how to create the simple units of measure. I've given the format here, type by default, it will show as simple in the tally screen. Suppose if you are going to create a unit of measure as kg. So symbol we have to give as kg and formal name we have to give it as kilogram. Okay, so we have to give the abbreviation and uh, the symbol and then number of decimal places will always be zero. That we are not going to make any changes and then we have to accept the screen. So this is the format uh, how we are going to create the units of measure. Now here I have given a small table where we are going to create the following the simple units of measure. We are creating kgs, grams, liters, packet, numbers, dozens, and we have as milliliters. Okay, so all these units of measure we are going to create in tally. So Let's start creating the units of measure. Right. So if you're in the gateway of tally screen, from there, select create, press enter on create. Under inventory masters, you have unit. So click on unit, enter on unit. Right, now here, by default as I told, it will be type simple, which means what? Before creating compound units of measure, we have to create simple units of measure. Now first we'll take kg. So symbol, please type kg. Once you type kg, press enter. Formal name, give it as kilogram. Now, for all of you, is the unit quantity code appearing? UQC beneath the formal name, or a few of you, it is not appearing. You're not able to get this UQC. For the ones, uh, if it is not appearing, you can let me know, or assume that for all of you, the UQC, that's the unit quality code is up here. So I assume for all of you, the unit quality code is appearing. So what you have to do is press enter. So you will come to the unit quantity code. 
So unit quantity core is a, is nothing but how we measure the stock, how we measure the inventory. Now at the top we have given as kg and kilograms, right? So unit quantity core also you will select kilogram. That's it. So here in the measure of tally, how do we weigh the units uh, stocks? That's nothing but through UQC. That is unit quantity code. So select kilogram. So just type K. You get kgs, you get kiloliter, that's K KLR, and you get K kilometer. So select kg kilograms. Let the number of decimal places be zero. So please make sure you have created the same. Please cross check whatever you have done. Is, is it in the same way? Once again, I'm repeating, if you, if you are not able to get the UQC, let me know. Or if you can activate it, you can activate it by F12 configuration. Yes, press enter, accept yes. The second one we will create as grams. The symbol will give it as GMS grams. Unit quantity code also the same one we have to select, that is grams. So press enter, accept, yes. Now, the next one we are going to create for numbers. NOS, then give the formal name numbers. Again, number of decimal places, which is zero. So next we have is dozen. So type D O Z. Enter. Dozen. Your quantity code. Number of decimal places. Then we have packet, PKT, formal name packet. Now packet is not available in the list of UQCs. So what you can do is you can select PAC, PAC. It's available. So if you scroll, yes, so here you have PAC. So select PAC, number of decimal places. Next. Pieces, so PC or PCS also you can do. Or PC is better, I would feel. So next is formal name is piece. Quantity, again, you have pieces. Okay, so next we have is a liter. So here you will not get liter directly, you will get it as kiloliter. So if you observe here beneath kilograms only you have kiloliter. KLR, so select kiloliter. Liter, kilometer, uh, liter, kiloliter, uh, both are same. Next, we will create milliliters. Okay. 
So now for that small m, big L and small s. Milliliters. So here also you have MLT, milliliter. So like this, we are going to create the units of measure. So the ones who are not able to create it, you can create the units of measure. Kg, gram, liter, packet, numbers, dozens, milliliters. So we have around seven units of measure. So the ones who have not done, who have joined late, can finish creating simple units of measure. So I hope all of you have done the simple units of measure. And now we will move on to the compound units of measure. Now, when we are using more than one unit of measure, it becomes a compound unit of measure, right? So one kg of how many grams we have? Thousand grams. One liter of thousand milliliters. One dozen of 12 numbers, right? So this same, we are going to put up in the compound units of measure. Now, above, I've given you the path how to go about same procedure. Under inventory masters, we have unit. But by default, it will be simple unit of measure creation uh, screen. So from simple, you have to uh, transfer from simple to compound. So how can we do that? We have to just press the backspace, nothing else. So once we uh, uh, press the backspace, you will get the option of simple or compound. So at that time, you can choose compound unit of measure. So let's create these compound units of measure. So backspace, compound. Now first we can choose a dozen. A dozen of how many numbers we have? It is 12. So second unit, it will be numbers. Next, kg, thousand grams. Liter of thousand milliliters. I like this. So you have to create these compound units of measure. So please create the compound units of measure. One kg of thousand grams, one liter of thousand milliliters, one dozen of 12 numbers. Okay, Cypria has a doubt how to create compound units of measure. I will show you the format again. Now, under inventory masters, you have unit, right? So press enter on unit. Now, by default, it will be like this, simple units of measure. So you have to convert sim uh, simple to compound, right? So what you have to do, you have to press backspace. Moment you press backspace, 
you can shift from simple to complex. That's all. So I hope you have got your doubt cleared, Sabria. And now you can create one dozen of 12 numbers, one kg of 1000 grams. Okay. So one uh, liter of 1000 milliliters, like that. So I'll show you the chart again. So you can please look at it and finish creating compound units of measure, the ones who are not yet done. Yes, so I hope all of you have finished compound units of measure. And now we move on to the stock category. Now, stock category is it offers a parallel classification of stock items. Classification is done based on similarity in behavior. For example, home appliances, electronic gadgets, etc. Now, before discussing what is a stock category, now we have a hierarchy. First, we have the stock category, followed by stock groups, and then we have the stock items. So I'll show you in the form of a chart with an example. So first we have is stock category. Then we have stock group. And we have stock item. Okay, so this is the hierarchy we have. So here, first appears is what? We have stock category. So if you take an example of a stock item, let's say we take the example of IFP washing machines. Okay, this is my stock item, which has been purchased, IFP washing machines. Now, my stock group can be what? It has to be washing machines. What could be my stock category? Washing machines would come under which category? Where does it commonly fall in? Electronic. Electronic devices. Home of. Huh? So, can I use a washing machine in the office premises? Would that be possible? So where do I commonly uh, make a use of it? At home, yes? So not, though it is an electronic device, yes, though it runs on electricity, but still, where do we have the usage of washing machines? For a home, for a house, right? So we always categorize washing machines, yes, even your uh, ovens, ovens actually now we have both office use and personal use. If you talk about like uh, stove, gas stoves and all that, they are categorized under home appliances. Yes or no? So even though you go to Chroma or Rezone or wherever you go, they are categorized under home appliances. So iron box, no, so your stock category can be home appliances. So this is the way you have the hierarchy of stock classification here. So first, under home appliances, we have the washing machines. In washing machines, it is IFP washing machines. So hope you have got a clarity now. So first up here is the stock category, then the stock group, and finally we have the stock item tab. So first we have to create the stock categories in tab. So let's begin creating the stock categories. So this is the path, how do we create? 
on the gateway of tally masters select the create option and there we choose stock category right so here we have create stock categories for the forum right i'll give a small practical exercise we have four electronic devices home appliances stationery and we have this fuel so first we will create the stock categories so let's be back to the tally screen press escape key yeah we are in the list of master screen now here only we have stock category press enter on stock category right now now we want to create four so first one electronic devices all the stock category creations have to be under the primary itself we are not going to change it is only under primary so press enter and accept the window next home appliances create home appliances stationery accept yes and we have a few so like this we are going to create four stock categories so please create these stock categories electronic devices home appliances stationery and fuel so once you're done with the creation of stock categories we will move on for the stock group creation i hope all of you have finished creating stock categories now we'll move on to the stock group creation yes so there's a small discussion of the stock groups stock groups is similar to the accounting groups now how we categorize the ledgers under the respective groups yes or no so if we talk about the land and building plant and machinery furniture fixtures and all these we categorize them under the fixed assets if we take mutual funds we have shares any other marketable securities under investment so like that you know the behavior of every ledger when we analyze it and we categorize them under the respective groups in the same way we categorize the stock items also under the respective stock groups and stock categories now here we have stock groups the so stock items of similar nature brand etc can be classified under a single stock group now here i have given a small example now if i take a stock item of philips tv sony tv sansui tv samsung how how many ever televisions we have we categorize all of them under the stock group of television so here i can give a small example of how the stock groups can be used so in the same way we will create the stock groups right so here we are going to create these stock groups we have printers computers mobiles books television refrigerators pens liquid fuel and solid fuel so let's start creating the stock groups so first we we'll do with printers computers and mobile phones so press escape key and come back to the list of masters select stock group right so let's start with the first one the first stock group we are creating is printers it, it is under primary itself now here you have to be very careful there are two questions here 
should the quantities of the items be added, set or alter GST details. Okay. Now here, should the quantities of the items be added, please activate it as yes for all the stock groups which you are creating. Why is this feature is important? Now, we have to pass the purchase vouchers, then this feature has to be activated in the stock group creation. Because purchase voucher, we can pass the purchase entries provided we activate this feature. Otherwise, how the situation would be assumed is you would close the main gate of your company and you expect the employees to come in. You got the point? So if I close the main entrance, how can I allow uh, the people to come in? So the same if I block this feature, I cannot pass the purchase voucher. Even though if I, uh, if I attempt to do it, I cannot do it. So make sure this feature is important and it has to be activated. So please activate this feature. Now set or alter GAC details need not activate this because we will configure all the GAC details in the stock item creation window after we have a small discussion of GST. Okay. So should quantities of the items be added, make it as yes for all the store groups, set or auto GST details? No. Accept yes. Next we have this computers. Under primary, same procedure. Should quantities of the items be added? Yes. Mobile phones under primary quantity, yes. Next, we have notebooks yes, quantities after notebooks, we have television. Should the quantities of the items be added? Yes. Next, we have liquid fuel. Now, examples of liquid fuel are which are they? Which are the examples for liquid fuel? If we take, we have petrol, then. Any any other example? We have petrol. What else we have? We have diesel. Diesel. Uh -huh. Then? Aero. Kerosene. So all these are examples for liquid fuel. Yes. Now, which are the examples for solid fuel? Coal. Four. Other than that, think, think, which can be the examples for solid fuel. Which is used commonly uh, on a daily basis at your uh, respective houses. Fuel is what? Subjectifier, yeah? And which is the solid form? Gas cylinder. Yes. Gas cylinder is not in the solid form part. It is in a gaseous form, which is stored in a, you know, a cylindrical, you know, phase. But it is in a gaseous form. What is it? It is daily used. It is? What can it be? Any other guess? Candle. Or... No. Candle is actually made out of wax and then we like it. That's fine. But which are like directly, you know, access with fire. It is what? Wood. Wood, yes, very good. It is coal. It is wood. One more very important, all of you are missing out. Max. No. 
You're coming very close to the answer. Very, very close. Match box. Very close. It says camphor. Yes or no? So camphor is also of the salt fumes. Right? So we have camphor, we have wood, we have coal. All these are examples for a salt fume. So enter, set or alter GST, no, pass the stop. So like this, we are going to create the stock groups. I think pens and refrigerators we have left out. We'll finish that. Okay, then I'll show you the list again. So that the ones who have not done can finish the stock group creation. We have pens. So the quantities of the items be added, yes. And last, I think, refrigerators. Yes, so like this, we create all the stock groups. So please finish in case you have not done, left it incomplete so that we can move on to the next concept. So please finish cross stock groups creation for printers, computers, mobiles, books, television, refrigerator, pens, liquid and solid. Or all of you are done. If you're done, let me know. We'll proceed. Okay. So once the stock groups are created, so first we uh, created the stock categories, then we have the stock groups, and now we move on to the stock items. But before we go for the creation of stock items, we have to do an uh, important concept, make an important discussion of tax. That's nothing but GST. Now, what is GST? What does GST stands for? GST stands for Goods and Services Tax. Yes. So what kind of a tax is GST? What is its nature? Is it a direct tax or it is an indirect tax? GST is a GST is an indirect tax. Yes. Now, how was the evolution of GST? How GST came into force? Let's have a small round of discussion before we go for the stock items, as I told. So GST stands for goods and services tax. So before GST was implemented came into force. Let's discuss the earlier indirect taxes which we had in our country. So if, it, if we discuss about the tax system in India, we have two types of taxes. One we have is this direct tax. Second we have is this, the indirect taxes, okay? Now if we talk about the direct tax system where the incidence and the impact of tax is on the same person, yes? So the effect is same, there's a direct effect. So the example for a direct tax is income tax. We also have wealth tax as one of the direct taxes, but from years ago, there are, there are discussions for it to be abolished uh, in a full swing, but we we need to see under what stage it is. But if we consider direct taxes, it is income tax. Now when we talk about the indirect taxes, where the incidence and the impact of tax is on two or more different individuals. It is not on the same person. Now, if we talk about the indirect taxes, we have two types. One we have is the central taxes. Second, we have also state taxes. Now, central taxes were service tax, excise duty. Then we had CST. CST stood for central sales tax, and we had custom. If we talk about the state taxes, we had VAT, value added tax. We had the entry tax, opera duty. We had luxury tax. We had still a number of taxes. So all these taxes were subsumed under GST, were replaced by GST. Now, even today, of course, we have customs still existing. We have some portion of excise duty, 
VAT, CST, we still have, but it is not for all the commodities. It is only applicable for a few commodities only. It is not applicable for all. So it is a restrictive application of these taxes. So now, when I talk about the old uh, taxes, the indirect taxes, service tax was applicable for the service providers, service recipients. In the nature of service, if I talk about the excess duty, it was applicable for the manufacturing activity. Then we have CST, central sales tax, for the interstate movement of goods. Then if we talk about customs, of course, for the imports, right? We have the customs. Next, we have for VAT, for the local sales. The sales happening within the state. We also had purchase tax, again, for purchases happening within the state. Then we have the entry tax, the octroi duty. Both are more or less the same. Uh, where, the, where if the consignments are transferred from one state to another state, example from uh, Karnataka to Maharashtra, what happens at the border of uh, the state, we see you know, at the check post. So what happens is at every check post and at the border, the consignments would be verified and at the border, this tax had to be paid to enter into the other state. Otherwise, there would be no entry given uh, for the consignments. That's from uh, from one state to another state. So that is when octroi duty or entry tax had to be paid. Then if we talk about luxury tax, of course, it used to be paid on the uh, wealth uh, which is held by an individual. Of course, if he crosses uh, the exemption limit, there was a base, there was a particular exemption limit. If, if he would cross that, Definitely luxury tax also have to be. So like each and every tax applicability has its own taxable event. Taxable event means the situation or the circumstances depending upon which the tax would be applicable. Yes, but all these taxes were subsumed, were replaced by GST. So that time it was categorized and like this was the activity, uh, this tax was levied. But when GST came into force as goods and services tax, what could be the taxable event? What could be the situation, circumstance, when GST would be applicable? It is nothing but supply. So taxable event for the applicability of goods and services tax is supply of goods, supply of services, or supply of both goods and services. So henceforth, GST would be applicable in this way. Yeah, so here I've given the same chart. So one tax, one nation now, GST, where entertainment tax, excise, CST, VAT, octroi duty, local tax, entry tax, luxury tax, all these, still many more taxes are there, are subsumed under GST. So now with the introduction, with the implementation of GST, it is one tax, one nation. There's a simplified tax regime and all are being absorbed under GST. Now what are the objectives of goods and services tax? I'll give you in brief, in short, some of the important objectives to eliminate the cascading effect. Now, what do we mean by the term cascading effect? It is double taxation. We have we had actually earlier tax on tax. So uh, ultimately at the final stage, the product value would become extremely higher. A lot of taxes would be involved. So henceforth, there was a lot of double taxation effects. So to eliminate that GST was brought, came into force. Next is ease of doing business. So GST is simplified tax regime. So there are no too many taxes to handle by a business person. So it's one simple tax to be levied either on sale or purchase or any other activity which are subject to GST. And then we have this regulation of unorganized sector. Yes, now where a trader, a dealer exceeds the basic uh, exemption limit, 
the threshold limit. So he will be ultimately has to get or obtain registration under GST. Otherwise, he'll be compulsory registered, or he can also apply for a voluntary voluntary registration under GST. So in all the ways, whether or not to apply registration depends upon this turnover, the aggregate turnover of any dealer. Then we have this is the uniform tax structure, most important. Now, before the central tax revenue used to be shared by the central government, the state tax revenue used to be shared by the state government. This was a situation and we had too many taxes for uh, uh, division. Now we have only one tax. The same tax will be divided between center and the states. 50% goes to the central government. 50% of the tax revenue will go to the state government. So there's a uniform tax structure. And if you talk about the online procedure under GST, now, even when service tax, then we had uh, central excise VAT, all were there. We had the e-filing of returns. Yes, we were using. But before that, also, if we observe where for registration purposes, for returns of a payment of tax, a lot of procedures were involved, and sometimes it used to be manual. But now, if a person you know, has his uh, laptop or a computer or uh, a desktop or whatever uh, system, computer system, and he has his uh, net and he and he's, has the help of any facilitation center that is the helpers to uh, enable him to register under GST and to file all his returns, then what is it required? So commencing from the GST registration until the filing of returns, all are done online, right? All is e electronic. Next we have is this increase in revenue, obviously. So there's a tremendous increase in revenue for the government. It can be center or it can be the state government. Next we have is this product competitiveness. Yes, there's a, a good competition, healthy competition of different commodities and services in the market with the introduction of GST. So in short, I've explained to you the objectives, more or less the features of GST. Yes, so these are the four components of GST. We have CGST, SGST, UTGST, and we have IGST. So CGST stands for Central Goods and Services Tax. SGST stands for State Goods and Services Tax. Next we have this UTGST, UTGST stands for Unit Territory Goods and Services Tax. Now, what does I stands for in IGST? Is it Indian GST, International GST? What is it I stands for? I holds for what? What is I? Interstate. It is? Interstate. Interstate. So one of you told that it is interstate GST. Any other answer, if you'd like to give? Integrated goods and services tax. It is integrated goods and services tax. It is neither Indian or international nor interstate. It is integrated goods and services tax. Right. So these are the four components of GST. Now, how are they applied? How was the application done? Yes. So here we have a small discussion of how the application of CGST, SGST, IGST happens. Now C stands for central, the central GST. Now CGST is applicable on supplies within the state. Moment we talk about within the state, we always convey a term as intrastate. Intra means within the state. If it is between the states, which means between Karnataka to Maharashtra, between Karnataka to Tamil Nadu, it becomes interstate. If it is within the state, within Karnataka, it is intrastate. So CGST is applicable on supplies within the state, and whatever tax is collected, it is shared with the central government. The CGST portion is taken over by the central government. 
Next, if we talk about SGST, SGST stands for State Goods and Services Tax, which is applicable on supplies, again within the state, and whatever tax is collected of SGST, it is shared with the state government, respective state government. Next, we have this IGST. Now, before I talk about IGST, now, if in case of transactions are happening within the states or between the states or in relation to states, I can say, we consider SGST. Suppose if it is happening, let's say, in Andaman and Nicobar Islands or Lakshadweep or we have, uh, you know, Puducherry or Pondicherry, however you uh, take up. Then we have Daman and Diu, Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Now, what are all these? They are the union territories of India, yes? So the same SGST will be replaced with UTGST. So instead of having CGST and SGST, where we call it as an intrastate supply, within the state supply, instead of S, we have as this UTGST in case if transactions are happening within the union territories, okay? So next we have this IGST, where I stands for Integrated Goods and Services Tax. And this is applicable on two situations. One we have is this interstate transactions, and second we have is this import. Now, if we talk about interstate as a road between two or more states when transactions are taking place, it is interstate uh, where IGST is applicable. Now, if we talk about the import transactions where the goods are being purchased from the other countries, which are taxable imports, okay, I would like to specify taxable imports that time also IGST is applicable, right? So, so now again, here the division matters here. Suppose if it is interstate, which means where transactions are happening between two or more states, tax collected is shared between the center and the states. The division, we are not aware as traders, but the division happens between the center and the state law. That is there. But in the bill, in the invoice, if you go for interstate transactions, if at all tax would be applicable under GST, it would be IGST. And we see the bill as IGST only. We, we don't see the division. Now, how are all of us see that CGST is 5%, SGST is 5%, right? All of us observe that in the bill. But when it comes to IGST, there is no clear cut division what we see of the taxes. Rather, it is shared by the central and state governments in the respective proportions. Next, if we talk about the import, export also it is applicable where there are taxable exports, taxable imports subject to no uh, situations or conditions. In case if uh, tax have to be levyable under GST, it would be IGST, where whatever IGST is levied, it is all collected by the central government. It is not shared with any of the state governments. If I talk about the export and the import transactions, Whatever IGST is levied, it is taken over completely by the central government and it is not shared by the state or with the state governments. Okay. Yes, this is a small chart I have given of the GST framework in India. As I discussed, we have two types of supplies. One we have is this intrastate supplies. Second, we have is this interstate supply. Also, we have import and export. So if I talk about the intrastate within the state, where we see CGST and SGST tax. So if a commodity is taxed at a rate of 18%, we have CGST 9%, SGST 9%. In case if transactions are happening with the union territories, CGST and the UTGST. That's why that slash has been given here. Next is we have is this interstate supply. Interstate supplies are told IGST, or if it is a taxable import and export, again it is IGST. So this is how the tax revenue uh, generation takes place under GST. Right. Now, if we go back to the stock item creation screen, after creations, after creating the stock groups. Yes, so here we have the stock item. It is a primary inventory entity 
and it is the lowest level of in information on your inventory. So I've given a small example of the uh, IFP washing machines, right? So how had we uh, followed that? First comes the stock category, home appliances. Under that, washing machines. And under that, we have this IFP washing machine. So stock item is the lowest classification where we have the IFP washing machines. So in the same way, we have to create now all the stock items with the implementation of GST details. So here I've also given mobile phones example. If we take mobile phones, we have Samsung. In Samsung, we have the required uh, version, configuration, or however, the latest features we see. Now, here there are a list of stock items which are to be created. We have Logitech printers, Vivo mobiles, Agile pens, we have camphor, Dell computers, ledger books, petrol, and finally we have this gold. Right? So let's begin with the creation of stock items. Press the escape key and come back to the list of masters. So select stock item under inventory masters, press enter. So here type the name as Logitech printers. Now all of you are able to get the category in the stock item creation screen, or is it not appearing? You're only getting under and units. Not appearing, ma'am. The category is not appearing for a few of you. So what you have to do is, you have to press F12 configuration. Press F12 configuration. Under inventory details, can we observe? Use stock category for stock items. Yes, it will be no. Please activate it as yes. Right? So once you activate it as yes, enter and close the window. Now you're able to get category now. The ones you're not able to uh, find, you have group and category both. Now, if I consider stock item as Logitech printers, it would come under which stock group? It will come under the stock group of printers. Yes? Now, what can be the stock category? Which can we select for Logitech printers? Electronic devices. It is electronic devices. So choose electronic devices and units of measure. You can consider it as numbers. Units, please don't forget to give the units of measure. Give units of measure as numbers because if you don't give the units of measure in the stock item creation screen, if at all you have to pass purchase voucher, it would not be possible. You can't pass a purchase voucher without giving the units of measure. So please make Excuse sure. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, ma. Ma'am, the category option is not coming. That's what I've told you. Press F12 configuration. Are you in the stock yeah. item screen? Yes, yes, I got that screen. Ah, there you have uh, the feature under inventory details. If you go, the second feature is this. Yeah. Use stock category yeah. for make it as but yes. It's still not coming. It will come. Make it it's as yes. Once you make yes. it, press Excuse enter. Me, and yes, ma'am. Ma'am, the use stock category is still not visible, ma'am. Have you created I'm the stock? I'm just having a phone. 
I'm just having four options under inventory details, ma'am. Okay. Yes, okay. ma'am. So, okay. So show more configurations. Show all configurations. Both make it as yes. Okay. Now you're able to get the teacher. Yes, ma'am. We got it. Yes. Thank Actually, you, ma'am. Welcome. Press enter, enter, and come back to the stock item creation. Right now, GST applicable. This is extremely important. GST applicable. Now, large tech printers they are taxable at the rate of eighteen percent, right? Which means they are taxable, highly taxable in nature. So, GST applicable, applicable. Set or alter GST. You have to activate it as yes. Set or alter GST, yes. Once you type as yes, press enter. Now you will get the GST details for the stock item. Are you able to get the details here? Or you're you're getting only few details. You're not getting the complete details stream. How it is appearing I'm in my only few, ma'am. Only few, ma'am. Okay, done. So we get the complete details now. Press F12 configuration. If you press F12 configuration, activate the first two features and the last two features. In between reverse charge input tax credit, we are not going to activate. We'll just activate the first two and the last two. How it is visible um, in the screen, in my screen. First two, last two as is. Middle two, we don't require. So once you activate the features uh, in the configuration screen, press enter and come back to the screen. Now, now all of you are able to get this. Edison, SAC details, tax details, and tax type? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good. Now, now, what you have to do is very, very important. We are going to discuss now. Description, HSN, or the SAC code. Now, any one of you are aware of what is a HSN? What is SAC? If you have a knowledge of it, in case you, if you know, you can answer. Otherwise, I will be discussing in detail of this. Right. Now, we have a description column and we have Hedison or SAC code. So before discussing these quotes, let me show you a small chart. This is a GST tariff screen, which you are observing. Now we have so many chapters. We have chapter one, two, three, four, five. So we have uh, till chapter, this is huge. We have till chapter 98. Now we'll choose one of the chapters here. We will take the example of yes. So we have here preparation of vegetables, fruits, nuts, or other parts of plants. We we'll take we can take this also preparations of cereals, flour, starch, or milk, pastry, cooks products. So we will take chapter nineteen. Okay. So I will take uh, chapter nineteen. You can just watch. You need not repeat what I'm doing it here. So chapter 19. Now if I select chapter 19, can you observe here? There is a, a list of commodities. So yeah, I just run through. 
Now we selected which chapter? Chapter 19. Now under chapter 19, malt extract is being given, meal, starch, or any kind of malt extract, cocoa preparations. And here, if you observe, preparation suitable for infants or young children, malted milk, mixes and dose for preparation of bakers, malt extracts, then pasta we have, whether or not cooked or stuffed with meat or other substances, or otherwise prepared, such as spaghetti, macaroni, noodles, lasagne, nochi, ravioli, and all that. Then we have un uncooked pasta, then containing eggs. So all these are pasta based. Then we have tapioca, right? Then preparation, uh, prepared foods are obtained by the swelling or roasting of cereals. For example, cornflakes, cereals, mazes, so all these, right? Then yeah, here we have the rate for cornflakes. We have pause, moody and the like, bulgur, wheat. Then we have uh, breads. Pastries, cakes, biscuits, and other baker baker's wares, whether or not containing cocoa, we have wafers, crisp bread, gingerbread. So we have a huge list here: pastries and cakes. Yes, all of you can observe this. Now, against the specific product, can you see a number is being given here? Some code it is there: one nine zero five two zero. Then followed by last two zeros. Again. 1905314 by 20. So, like this, we have the codes here. We have the code, we have the product, and against it, we have the rate of the code. So, how is this interpreted in GST? The code, what you see here, 1905102000. So, here, this is nothing but HSN code. Harmonized system of nomenclature. It is the naming system for the goods under GST. Harmonized system of nomenclature has been for all these years, even when the, your old indirect taxes were there, right? If you had VAT, service tax, and all that, even then also we have HSN. Now also we have HSN. HSN is nothing but the naming system or the coding system for goods. We cannot browse and we cannot get the GST rates automatically. Actual way, in reality, how do we check the applicable GST rates for any product or commodity or any service? Because GST stands for goods and services tax. So if I have to search the GST rate for any good or any service, how do I do so? I will do by Google, by, you know, Google out and then find out the rate. But in the actual sense, how the rates are determined? how the rates are verified. It is with this HSN code system, okay? So I'll give you the breakup of this, how this coding is done. Now, let's go to the screen. So here I'll copy the same code here, 1905. One zero, for one zero followed by the one zero and then we have is zero zero right so how many digits we have here two four six eight so totally we have here eight digits yes now this how do we interpret first of all this is called as the hsn code and hsn stands for harmonized system of nomenclature. Yes. So this is the abbreviation for Hutchison Code, Harmonized System of Nomenclature. And this Hutchison Code, now what you're observing is eight digits, right? So Hutchison Code can be either four digits, six digits, or maximum of eight digits. So for Hutchison code, we can have four, six, or maximum of eight. Now what you're seeing at the top is eight. So more than eight, we can't have the Hutchison code. Same holds for SAC code. Now, this breakup, how can we get? Now here, if you take it as one nine, 
one line stands for chapter chapter number next we have 05 this is sub chapter next we have 10 it is heading last two zeros it is sub heading this is how the hsn code is interpreted so how do we read the code under chapter 19 sub chapter 5 heading 10 sub heading 0 we get the particular product of commodity this is applicable for both hsn and sec now hsn code is applicable for goods hsn code is applicable for goods if i talk about sac code this is applicable for services yes hsn code is applicable for goods and sac code is applicable for services so again here sac is service accounting code okay so sac stands for service accounting so i hope all of you have got this uh, understanding explanation this is how the codes are interpreted okay right now now in the description column now when when we saw the tally screen we have this description column right now here what has to be given now if you observe the tariff i'll go back to the tariff now anywhere now you have pastries and cakes you have biscuits you have now if you take example of biscuits and papad if you take biscuits anywhere it is given as uh, mari biscuit or uh, do you have sunfeast biscuits parleji biscuits is anywhere given any brand is given over here no it is only given as biscuits if i take papad now papad you have uh, so many companies right so many brands you have is any brand has been given here no so you take anything you take waffles we wafers rusk you have right now rusk do you have any brand no it is just given as rusk which means when we are purchasing or selling the commodities we consider the brand but when it when when it comes for the applicable applicability of gst levy of gst government is not brand conscious right so government is only focused on which is the commodity which is being traded or service being rendered government is not concerned with which is the brand in what if you take computers you have dell acer right you have apple but government is not concerned what is the what is a, a product it's a computer configuration that's it probably probably not even con uh, configuration much but of course the mainly the product of the commodity is concerned rather there is no brand being given importance or company being given importance yes so what we have to do here in the tally screen also when we go for the description logitech is the brand yes we have logitech computers printers and all that logitech is a brand so we have to consider only as printers in the description code so please type printers and you can give the hsn code if you would like to know what is the hsn code for printers let's find out yes so we have hsn code for printers can you observe here hsn code for computers printers keyboard storage devices it is 847160 so this is the hsn code you can give the same even in your tally too so it's a six digit code 847160 so just give it in brief it is 
it will be much more in detail you have to send code but as of now for your practice sake you can give as such a four seven one six okay now is non gst goods it is no because printers are taxable in nature so please retain it as no only don't make it as yes so no calculation type it is on value taxability now we have three classifications here Ex exempt nil rated and taxable choose taxable integrated tax which means once you give the total tax rate gst rate it will get uh, automatically divided into central tax and state tax okay now here for logistics printers the uh, tax applicability is 18% so just give 18 and press enter automatically central tax becomes 9% state tax becomes 9% okay enter enter no cesses in what as of now i hope all of you are done with this gst details for the stock item if not please make sure you do it press enter type of supply we have goods printer is not a service but it is a good now again don't give the rate of duty here not required because already we have given in the gst details for stock item screen again we need not give repeat the same so just press enter we are not giving any opening balance because we are passing vouchers for the same so whatever stock items we are creating it is all with a zero opening balance zero stock so accept yes yes this is the way we are creating for all the stock items so the next one we have is vivo mobiles 18% gst so let's create for vivo under the stock group of mobile phones now category it has to be electronic devices unit of measure numbers gst applicable set the alter gst yes now description again what we give now Vivo is a brand, Oppo is a brand, Samsung is a brand, so we choose only mobile phones. Now let's find out what is the HSN code for mobile phones. Yes, it is eight five one seven. Of course, it will be. Uh, uh, it can be more than four digit depending upon whether it is a smartphone or any other category. So here we have a huge list. We have GST rates for phones here. Yes, can you make out here? See for mobile phones, it is in code as eight five one. Actually, this is the old rate being depicted. HSN code will remain the same, but as of now, it is eighteen percent GST. It is not where well, it is being increased to eighteen percent. So don't concentrate on the rates. If you can focus on phones, it is eight five one seven. So it's the same. We can give up here as the Edison phone. So you can just give eight five one seven. Eight five one seven here. Again, non GST no. On value tax. So the rate is eighteen percent. Nine percent, nine percent will be automatically divided. Type of supplies, goods, no rate of duty again, and no opening balance.
The next one we have is Agile pens. So what is the rate applicable for Agile pens? It is 12%. So type Agile pens. Under the store group of pens. Category, stationary. Now units of measure, preferably take packets because numbers, it won't be much uh, feasible. So I prefer, you can take it up packets, not even pieces or numbers, it's preferably packet. One packet of five pens or 10 pens, like that. So GST applicable, center order GST, yes. Description, pens, because actually it's again a brand. Now, what is the Hedgeson code for stationary? If we consider see again, if you go for pens, you have a ball pen, marker pen, right? We have again a big category, but in general it is 9608. So again, as it would further 9608, 1020, like that depending upon the type of pen, but in general, you can consider it is in code as 9608. That's more than enough. Okay, 9608. Non-GST, no. On value, taxable. Rate is 12%. Again, 6%, 6%. You have a division of CGST and HGST. Type of supply goods. No rate of duty. So after Logitech printers, Vivo mobiles, Agile pens, we have Camp Pop. So let's do Camp Pop. No, as I've told, camphor is a solid fit. Now, if you require, instead of giving only camphor, you can take any brand like uh, Shakti camphor, tablets, somewhat like that, because only camphor will become your uh, description. If you require, you can just change the name like this as Shakti camphor tablets. Okay, so it will be under solid fuel. Fuel. And now, camphor tablets, of course, we ourselves as consumers, we don't consider it as in numbers, one and one tablet or two tablets. It will be like in boxes, either in boxes or it will be packets. So if you have created unit of measure as boxes, we can take box. If not, we can choose packet. Packet would be more appropriate for camphor. Choose package. Again, a GST applicable. Set an alter GST. Yes. Description camphor tablets. This camphor tablets. Again, Hutchison code. Let's find out what is the Hutchison code for camphor tablets. Yeah, you can give it as, actually here it has been depicted as zero, but it is the old list. So as I told, please don't consider the GST percentage. As of now, it is 18%. So just focus on the code. So 291421. So again, you have natural camphor, 291421110. Say anyone you can consider. Okay, so 2914210. Okay. This two nine one four two double one zero is non GST goods no on value again taxable and it is taxable at the rate of eighteen percent. So again nine and nine million to it. Please create the stock item for camphor.
type of supply routes. Again, opening balance, rate of duty. Next is an easy one. We have is Dell. So Dell computers, the tax rate is 18%. So let's complete up Dell. So type Dell computers under which it is computers. Computers are electronic devices, units of measure, numbers, GST applicable, sector alter GST, yes. Description as usual computers. Again, Dell is a brand. So description computers. Now HSN code for computers, what can be the code here? I think for printers and we were watching, we were able to get. So it is 8471, the same. 84 for printers, computers and all. It's 8471. So type the HSN code as 8471. Is non-GST, no. On value, calculation type, taxability, taxable, and the rate is 18%. Okay. Type of supply, it will be goods. And opening balance again. So please create for Dell. Mom? Yes, Mom? Mom, I have a little doubt uh, regarding uh, camp for Mom. Ah. Now I have to change that most into boxes, ma'am, that unit. Ah, what unit you had given for camphor? Uh, like I have given uh, notes, ma'am. Numbers you give. Ah, yes, ma'am. Now I have to change that into packets. So you have to go to Alt G. Okay, ma'am. Press Alt G and go to Alt Master. You can uh, mute yourself once you raise your question. I'll answer here. Alter master, go to alter G, go to option, alter master. In the alter master, you have under inventory master stock item, select stock item and choose camper tablets. I have given here as Shakti camper tablets. If you have given only camper also, it's fine. Choose camper tablets, press enter. And now you can do whatever change you like, packets, boxes or boxes. I hope you've got your answer. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So here, so this is how we do the stock item creations. We have furthermore, but the ones who have not yet completed till now, we can finish up the ledger books, uh, petrol and gold. I will take it in the next session. So the ones who have not completed until Dell computers or who are having any issue, you can let me know in creating the stock item. Please make sure your complete Dell computers. So all of you have done with the stock item creations. Is it done to Dell computers? Um. Okay, so once you're done under Dell computers, you can uh, stop creating the stock items. If you want, you can try with the ledger books, petrol and gold, but it is better you don't do petrol and gold because there I have to discuss a few concepts. So, so here we have done in this session until the creation of stock items, we'll do the remaining in the next class and then we will begin with the vouchers under inventory. Okay, so please have consistent. Please do have a sufficient practice, whatever you have done until here, and then we can easily carry on with the next sessions. So, mom, yes, oh, mom, I have tried, but it's not going to you, mom. It's skipping to next oh, mom. It is not going to the units of measure. Oh, yes, mom. 
If I go to the units of measure, or you can do one thing, you can delete that particular stock item, whatever you have done. You can just press Alt D and you can delete it and then you can recreate it. That's it. Not, not an issue. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Let's get me. You can do that. You can recreate. Not an issue. Any other doubt? All of you are clear? The concepts done so far? Yes, ma'am. So we close the session for the day. Meet you all in the next session. Until then, take care. Have a nice day. Thank you.